Hello. In, in this demonstration, we'll be going over the sequence generator in Centerprise, uh, which you can find under the resources section of the toolbox. The sequence generator is used to generate numbers uh, for use in mapping uh, to targets or other transformations in conjunction with some more th other uh, driving record source, uh, such as a source or uh, another data transformation. Uh, so, for example, I have data mapping from a uh, data source into a couple of fields here. Then I have one field uh, in particular which is being mapped from the sequence generator. So the way it works is for every single record I have here, I will generate a record here and for when it comes time to, to, to create a value for this particular field, I will get it from the sequence generator. So, for example, if I preview the data here, you can see that I have three records because I have three records in my data source uh, and I'm getting data coming from that data source except in this case I have a sequence of numbers starting one, two, three. Uh, I can control this sequence by selecting the properties of the sequence generator and manipulating the start value and the step. So for example I can instead of starting from zero I can start from 100 and count by two. So once I do that and preview the data, you can see that now I have 102, 104, and 106. So one thing to note is that I didn't start from 100, I started from 102. And the reason for that is, is because I'm using the next value uh, output of the sequence generator as opposed to current value. The next value is going to do the incrementing. So in this case, I have 100 as my current value and 2 as the number I'm going to increment by. So whenever I use next value it's going to add 100 plus 2 and return me that value. Uh, so the, if I want to make use of current value it's going to be whatever the number is before I increment. So to illustrate that uh, here's an example where I'm mapping from the next value as well as current value. So if I preview the data at this point you can see that I have 201 uh, because I'm starting from 200 and incrementing by 1 and the current value is also 200, 201 because after I've done the incre incrementing I'm just going to take whatever that value is after I've incremented. Uh, so if no matter how many times I map current value it's still going to be the exact same number as you see here. So contrast that to as soon as I map the next value again onto this new member. And if I preview the data now, you can see that, okay, I have 201 from the first increment, uh, 201, 201, because I'm taking that current value now. But now that I'm mapping from next value again onto this field, uh, I've gone ahead and incremented once again. So this is one increment, two increments, and three increments. So um, at this point, uh, everything that I've shown you so far has been in memory. So you'll notice that no matter how many times I preview, uh, I'm starting from the exact same number. Uh, this may not be desirable if you want to have uh, something unique across multiple jobs, not just within the job. So for example, if you have a you know unique identifier or a, a, an identity column in a database, uh, you're probably want, going to want to have a number that does not you know, keep repeating. So if, if that's your case, you're probably going to want to use the database table, in which case uh, the sequence is now, instead of uh, this number being stored in this box here, it's actually stored in a database table that you choose in the connection here. But to even before you get this far, you're probably going to want to have to set, uh, configure the sequences. And to do that, you'll use the uh, sequence configuration screen under the tools menu. So I go tools, sequences, uh, and then uh, you're presented with the sequence screen, in which case you can ha have a grid full of multiple sequences, and then you can edit the details of the sequence at the pa this pane below. So uh, the first thing on the screen you'll notice is the connection screen, uh, connection information, uh, where you're going to tell Centerprise where to store your sequence. If you have never set this up before, you'll probably be uh, presented with this dialog asking you if you want to create the sequence. If you click yes, Centerprise will create the sequence uh, and it'll create a table in a specified uh, database server. 
In this case, I'm picking this database, master, and it'll create my center prize sequence table. Once I have this table created, I can then add sequences, as I, you see here. Uh, the first thing is the sequence name, and this is how you'll identify this or, or uh, indicate to Centerprise which sequence you're talking about. And then we have the current value, and this is basically to tell the sequence generator uh, where to start counting. Uh, again, once I, I, I have this, I can click Save, and now I've persisted that sequence to my uh, database. Uh, and I can add multiple sequences. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make this sequence start from 1,000 and then save it. So now that I have this information set up or the sequence uh, sequences set up, I can now use them in my data flow. So I just go to my data sequence generator, say, okay, I don't want to use, I want to use uh, my sequence that I just created, this one, click OK, uh, and then pick my sequence by name. In this case, I'm going to pick sequence 2, which if you remember, uh, it was starting from 1,000, or the current value is 1,000. Uh, and then I have the batch size. The batch size is basically, okay, how many, once I go to the database, how many sequences should I retrieve? I don't want to go to the database for every single time I need a new number, so I'm going to go get a batch of numbers. And the way it works is that if I say my batch size is 50, I'm going to say, okay, well, get whatever the current number is in the database and then when I increment that number I'm going to increment the, uh, the basically 50 times whatever the step is. So for example if I click OK and preview my data you can see that I am uh, comes, it comes back uh, going 1001, 1002, 1003 but now if I preview my data again you can see now it's 1,051, 1,052, 1,053, and that's because my batch size was set as a, at 50 and my step was 1. And every time I preview this, I'm going to get different numbers because, uh, because of the persisted sequence. Uh, sometimes it's not desirable that you actually make any change uh, in the database, uh, even as far as your sequence is concerned. So if you're just doing a kind of a debugging uh, mode in 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 Centerprise, and you and you don't want to actually change anything, even in your sequences. You can use the uh, use in memory sequence during previews, at which point it will just revert back to the same uh, <clears throat> uh, in memory sequence. But when you actually run it, it'll use the database table sequence. So uh, the last thing to note, though, is that. The sequence generator itself is not a driver of record. So uh, we have three records in our preview here, and that's because we have three records in our delimited source. If I'm to get rid of the source, this is not enough to create records. So you'll get this error if, if you try and do that. So you'll say, uh, it'll, it'll say, uh, in this case, uh, insert does not have any element mapped to a source or data set transformation. So you'll ha you have to use the sequence uh, generator in conjunction with something else that's producing records. So um, that pretty much is it for the sequence generator.